In this video, we are gonna learn about the anatomy of kidney. First, what are kidneys? Kidneys are a pair of excretory organs and they are situated in the posterior abdominal wall behind the peritoneum, hence they are called retroperitoneal organs. Kidneys remove waste products and excess of water and salts from the blood and maintains its pH. Right kidney lies slightly lower than the left kidney because of the presence of huge right lobe of liver above it. Vertically, they extend from 12th thoracic vertebra to the center of the body of 3rd lumbar vertebra. Each kidney is about 12 cm long, 6 cm broad and 3 cm thick. The long axis of kidney is directed downwards and laterally. The transverse axis is directed laterally and backwards. Now let's talk about the external features of the kidney. And I'll also tell some points on side determination of the kidney. Each kidney is bean shaped. It has upper pole, which is in close contact with the suprarenal gland and the lower pole. To differentiate these two poles, the upper pole is somewhat thick and rounded and the lower pole is thin and pointed. There are two borders, the medial border which is concave and the lateral border is convex. Each kidney has two surfaces, anterior and posterior surface as I have outlined them down here. Anterior surface is said to be irregular and the posterior surface flat, but it is often difficult to recognize the anterior and posterior aspects of the kidney just by looking at the surfaces. So a better way to do this is to examine the structures present in the hilum as I'll describe them now. The anterior most structure in the hilum is the renal vein. Behind the renal vein is the renal artery. And the posterior most structure is the renal pelvis, which continues down below as ureter. You can remember this as VAR from anterior to posterior. Now let's look at the relations of the kidney or the parts that are surrounding the kidney. First, anterior relations. Since we are looking at the kidneys from anterior view, so the right kidney is on the left side and the left kidney is on the right side. And here we have the vascular supply of the kidneys. First, let's talk about the anterior relations of the right kidney. The uppermost area is covered by the right suprarenal gland. And we have areas as hepatic area, colic area, jejunal area, and duodenal area covered by the second part of the duodenum. And remember, the areas colored in blue are those covered by the peritoneum. Now moving on to the anterior relation of the left kidney. Again, the uppermost part is covered by left suprarenal gland. And then we have gastric area. Splenic area, pancreatic area, jejunal area, and at last colic area. And again, the areas colored in blue are covered by the peritoneum. 
And if you wonder what lies below the kidneys are the iliac crest, just about 2.5 cm below kidney. Now on to the posterior relations. But this time, since we are looking from posterior view, the right kidney is on the right side and the left kidney is on the left side. Lots of structures related to posterior side of kidneys are common. The most part of the upper half is covered by the area of diaphragm. And there are three big muscles related to the posterior side of the kidneys. First one is psoas major. And we have quadratus lumborum on the middle. and transversus abdomen is on the lateral side. The left kidney is related to 11th and 12th rib, whereas the right kidney is related only to the 12th rib since it lies slightly lower than the left kidney. Besides three muscles, the posterior relation of kidneys also consists of three nerves. They are subcostal nerve, iliohypogastric nerve and ilioinguinal nerve. Subcostal vessels are present along with subcostal nerve. Now let's go to the coverings of the kidneys. There are four structures or the tissues that cover the kidney. I'll explain them from the transverse section of the kidney. The innermost layer is the fibrous capsule or true capsule. It is thin membrane that closely invests the kidney and lines the renal sinus as well. Outside of the fibrous capsule, there is a layer of adipose tissue called perinephric fat. It is thickest at the borders of the kidney and fills up the extra space of renal sinus. The third layer of renal coverings is called renal fascia or false capsule. It has two layers, anterior layer or fascia of gyrota and the posterior layer or the fascia of jucker candle. The anterior layer of renal fascia on the medial side continues as the anterior layer of the opposite kidney. Whereas laterally, this layer fuses with the posterior layer to form lateral conal fascia that again fuses with the fascia transversalis. Posterior layer on the medial side fuses with the fascia of swas major that is attached to the vertebra. To know the vertical extension of the renal fascia, 
I have drawn the sagittal section of the kidney here. The renal fascia fuses above the upper pole of the kidney before splitting into two. It covers up the suprarenal gland and again fuses to continue as suspensory ligament of suprarenal gland. The suspensory ligament then gets fused to the diaphragmatic fascia. Below, this layer do not fuse and are lost in the peritoneal tissue. Finally, the outermost covering is again the adipose tissues called paranephric fat. It is more abundant posteriorly and towards the lower pole of the kidney. It fills up the paravertebral garter and forms a cushion for the kidney. Now I will explain the macroscopic as well as microscopic structure of the kidney. Here you can see I am drawing the sagittal section of the kidney. On naked eye examination, the kidney consists of outer cortex and inner pyramid sept medulla. Some cortex invades into the medulla and these are called renal column of Bertini. Cavity within the kidney is called renal sinus which is occupied by the renal blood vessels, pelvis, lymph nodes and perinephric fat. And there are some ray-like structures coming out of medulla into the cortex. These are called medullary rays or ferrin's pyramid. The area of cortex lying on the base of medulla are called cortical arches. The renal pyramid capped with adjoining cortical arch forms a renal lobe. On average, there are around 7 to 18 renal lobes in one kidney. Here in the orange, I am drawing an artery coming from the branch of renal artery. The interlobar artery runs between two pyramids and divides into arcuate artery which further gives interlobular arteries. The area between two interlobular arteries with a medullary ray in the center is called renal lobule. Nephron is the functional unit of the kidney. The Bowman's capsule, tuft of capillaries and glomerulus forms renal corpuscles which lies in the cortical region along with the convoluted parts of the nephron. The straight loop of Henle lie in the medulla. Many of these nephrons drain into a collecting duct or duct of Bellini. The duct of Bellini opens into the renal pelvis through an opening called renal papilla at the area cribosha of the renal pyramid. The renal papilla first opens into minor calyx which joins with other minor calyces to form major calyx which again fuses with other major calyces to form renal pelvis. The renal pelvis comes out from the hilum and continues as ureter proper. Now finally to the blood supply of kidney. I'll explain this with a flow chart. Here I'm drawing abdominal aorta which at the level of L2 gives renal artery. The renal artery gives five segmental branches that divide the entire kidney into five vascular segments. 
on anterior aspect there are apical upper middle and lower segments and in the posterior aspect there are posterior and some parts of apical and lower segments each of these segmental arteries give lobar artery the lobar artery divides into interlobar artery the interlobar artery divides to form arcuate artery from the arcuate arteries there arise interlobular arteries the interlobular arteries now give afferent arterioles which forms the glomerulus from the glomerulus there arise efferent arteriole which forms interlobular veins i'm not going to draw veins because it's going to look very congested and also it's very easy because the veins follow the exact pathway the arteries came in i have written them side by side to their corresponding artery the interlobular veins drain into interlobar veins which drain into lobar veins and the lower veins into segmental veins segmental veins unite to form renal vein which ultimately drains into inferior vena cava shortly on the lymphatic drainage and nerve supply the lymphatics of the kidney drain into the lateral aortic nodes located at the level of origin of the renal arteries The kidneys receive sympathetic nerve supply from T10 to L1 segments and parasympathetic from vagus nerve. Thank you.